Hello, today we will be looking at the capacitive vehicle routing problem. Uh, this problem is about creating routes for vehicles with a certain capacity. Uh, vehicles are located on a depot, they have to cover some clients, each have a demand, and depending on the vehicle capacity, uh, we should be looking at a route uh, that can take, that, that should amount for the less uh, for the minimum cost. Uh, so we'll have a different parameters. Lowercase n will be the number of clients. Uppercase n is going to be the set of clients with the elements going from 1 till n. V will be the set of all vertices or nodes. So it's the vertices of clients including 0 and 0 will be represented, representing the depot. A will be the set of arcs. Uh, we are going to be taking directed arcs here. Um, so these are all the possible combinations without taking into account when uh, the nodes are the same. So I don't go from one node and then uh, next going to the exact same node. And we'll assume that each link will have a cost. Uh, in our case, we'll be looking at the distance. Uh, capital Q will be the vehicle capacity and lowercase q sub i is going to be the amount uh, that have to be delivered to the customer. So Q is going to be the demand of, of each client. Um, so the formulation is this. Uh, minimize the total cost. Uh, then I make sure that if I'm a at a client, then I only need to go to one node, and I have to go to one node. Uh, if I reach to a client, then I will have to have, uh, I will have to come from another node. And this is, this is a different way to write this constraint. Or we will be looking at an indicator constraint, so that's that's why I write it like this. Uh, if you look at the literature, you will see. Uh, some other way of looking at this constraint, the subtor illumination constraint. So what it says here is that if uh, the arc ij is active, if I'm actually going from i to y, then this needs to be true. U is going to be the um, uh, cumulative demand up to that point. So if I go to y, then the cumulative demand until j for that route is going to be uh, the previous cumulative demand plus the demand for J. And so never the cumulative demand is going to be more than the vehicle capacity and that's the way that we force the problem to create more than one route. <coughs> so this is all markdown. Um, I'm using, I should have should have said that at the very beginning. I'll be looking at uh, how to use Ziplex in Python, and well, uh, and I'm using right now a Jupyter notebook. Uh, this is all Markdown. If I double click here, then this is all the model formulation. Uh, you can pause the video now if you want to look at this. Uh, write it down as well. Um, so I'll just continue now. I'll clear, uh, I'm going to create a um, random set of nodes and I'm going to come up with some parameters and upload them. We'll write the, pro the problem in Ziplex and then we'll see how the solution looks, looks like. So I'm going to import uh, NumPy for uh, creating random numbers. I'm going to create a random object. Uh, and I'm gonna set I'm gonna set the seed to zero so uh, so so if you run this exact code then uh, you're gonna see the same results as me because we're gonna be using the, the same seed so if you don't want to have if you if you want to truly random then just like you, you can take out the, this line you can com comment it out and and then it, it'll always be different. Um, so we'll start 
with 10 clients uh, vehicle capacity uh, of 15 then the set of node I'll create it with a list comprehension it's gonna be I4 I in range from 1 till n plus 1 yeah because I want to I want it to be from R1 all the way to N, from 1 to N. So range takes uh, up to the previous integer of the second number that you given there, so that's why it goes to N plus 1. Then V will be uh, 0. It's going to be the element 0. And then I add the previous list to that one. And I'll create a dictionary for the demand, and I'm gonna make it random too. Um, so for I, random an integer. It's gonna be an integer number between one and nine. So I'll write down ten. Um, this is gonna be for only the clients. So, n looks like that. B is the same, but has the zero at the beginning. And the dictionary Q looks like that. So for client one, we have a demand of six. For client two, we have a demand one, and so on. Let's see how uh, this may look for random clients. So I will have to create the uh, random locations. So I'm gonna do it like this. Uh, I'm gonna create uh, for all the nodes random locations, and I'm gonna put in a box of um, 200 by 100. So for the y coordinates, uh, this is gonna be by 100. So it's, so it's gonna be a rectangle, and I'll I'll plot this. So I'm gonna plot it with matplotlib. Just see how we get scatter plot of only uh, the clients. So I'll ignore. I'm only gonna take it from the first. I mean, from the second element of the list. The first one is for the depot, so I'm gonna ignore that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those are the clients. Um, I'm gonna make it a brighter blue just to make it look better. <coughs> Oops. There. And let's write something on those nodes. Let's see how what the um, demand for each is. Um, I'm gonna write something next to each node I'll write the, de the demand so and I'll write it with uh, using LaTeX so it's gonna be Q underscore and then I'm gonna write the ID number there and then I'm gonna make it equal to the actual demand so I'm gonna give it to it afterwards so it's gonna be I then Q of I. That. And now the location of that point where I need it to be written, written. So it's going to be log X Y. And uh, the same for Y. That. Um, gonna fix this so let's, let's, let's see I'm gonna put it a little bit to the right of each node there's some mistake here okay I need to close that one there so these are all the nodes and I'm missing the depot so I'll do that now 
So on the input is on the it's represented by zero, so it's just gonna do that. And now I'm gonna make it red. And I'm gonna make it a square. Missing here, okay. Here, look, there. So that's the depot, and we need to cover all of these nodes. Uh, I'm gonna make sure the access is correct. I mean, it's the same scale, I want it to be the same scale, so it looks nicer. There. All right, so. What am I missing here? We have almost all the parameters. I'm still missing the set of arcs and uh, the cost. So the cost is gonna be the distance. So I'll create a set of arcs first. Set of arcs is gonna be, um, so every ij for i in a set of nodes or yeah, in the set of nodes as well but only those that have i different than j so this is how a looks like yeah it's a very long list and cost i'm gonna make it with a dictionary uh, it's gonna be indexed with the name of the link then I'm going to use the Euclidean distance between the points so it's going to use this function from NumPy make the difference of x minus that's for j so that is the difference in the x-axis and then the difference in the y-axis copy this y and what am I missing okay so this is for ij um, ij in set a there so we already have everything now we're gonna use simplex to model this so gonna be from do cplex that and p that model we cannot be importing the object model so we'll create a model at this point it's going to be empty CPRP. now the variables um, so x is going to be binary I always like to use the dictionary format. Um, it's, it's, it's easier, you don't create uh, more variables than you actually need. Um, so this is gonna be based, I'm gonna create uh, as many X variables as elements I have in the list uh, E here of all arcs, I mean, excuse me, A. Of all arcs okay and so the, the name of this variable will be x and u uh, okay so let's just write from scratch u is gonna be a continuous variable I'm also gonna be using I mean creating it with a dictionary um, so it's gonna be created for every client uh, and this one has an upper bound and is Q capital Q and the name of this variable is gonna be U okay so let's see how this looks so see X is a dictionary indexed by uh, the links 
and they're all type binary and that's the name so it uses then the, the string that I give it here and then it adds the key in the dictionary the corresponding key so u looks very similar uh, but it also has an upper bound by default continuous variables have a lower bound of zero so you don't need to write that down now the constraints no actually the objective first so the objective is to minimize the summation of all costs so the cost here c uh, so model is a minimization problem minimize then the sum of uh, c i j multiplied by x i j oops i keep missing that one i j there so i need to minimize the sum the sum is over all i j's in a that's the objective next our first constraint this one um, okay so we'll add constraint constraints plural because I'm gonna be adding them all remember it's, it's one constraint per client so and the constraint is the sum of xij's for every j in b let's see in b j is different than i if j is different than i this needs to be equal to one for all i's in the client set okay very similar the other one now it's for every j and there's the summations over i Let's see so add constraints mdl dot summation whoops i'm seeing here i made a mistake this is going to be a square bracket yeah so it's the same here ij Keep doing that. Uh, okay, there. For i is in v if i is different than j. This has to be 1 for every j in n. Excellent. Now, now we'll add a indicator constraint. This is going to be interesting. Um, so indicator constraints work as we it enforces a constraint only if a condition is met and in this case so we'll add with up them all together so add what are the indicator constraints so I'm gonna add them all then an indicator constraint so if you look here we have to put a binary variable the constraint and then by default the active value is going to be one so it's going to enforce the linear constraint when the binary value takes the active value so if i don't give it anything it's going to assume that the active value is one so when the binary value is equal to one then it's going to enforce uh, whatever linear constraint i write here so Whenever x i j is one, I want u u i plus q j be equal than u j, and this is for every i j in A, and then j and i has to be different than zero so 
right, for ij to a if i is different than zero and j is different than zero as well. The last constraint, we already have that upper bound here for you because we uh, wrote in the definition of the variable right here. So they, they all already have that constraint. So we have to uh, put the lower value, the lower bound for that variable only. So that's going to be dl add constraint um, so u i have to be greater or equal than q i this is for all kinds and that's it now the solution is going to be we're going to take it after the problem solves um, if we can put something here, log um, output equal to true. Let's see. There you go. That's all the process. Uh, this is the branch and bound uh, working. The relative gap. We've seen this in other videos. And let's look at the solution, how it looks. So there you go, uh, this is the total distance, it's going to be 819 and something. Uh, we, uh, Cplex only prints out all the variables that are different than zero, this is why you don't see every variable. So if you don't see a variable that you know that is there, it's because it has a value of zero. And to finish this, I want to uh, plot this and see how the result looks like in the same plot that we made um, at the beginning. So I'll collect the active act arcs first because I want to keep only those that are one. So this is the key part. So I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna collect every arc. If the x of that arc it has a solution value of 1. I'd rather write if it's greater than 0 0.9. I don't like comparing floats number with an equal. So if it's above uh, 0 0.9, because sometimes C plus will tell you it's, it's 0 0.9999. So if you compare it with 1, it's not going to be 1, but it actually is 1. Uh, and this, that happens when, when the problem is very big. Um, you, you run to those uh, numerical complications. So the active arc looks like this. So it's the same arc that you see that have this, the value 1 here. And I'm going to copy now the same plot. And I'm going to just add a little bit to see how the routes look. So that's it. <coughs> I'm going to put it here. Uh, so for every i j in active arcs, I will plot a line. So first I have to put the location of x for i and for j. And the same goes for the y coordinates. I'm going to make it color green. Whoops. My keyboard changed to Latin American. To make it to okay. Now it's okay. It's going to be green. That's okay. That's too dark. Now that's better. Okay, so this is uh, our result. We have one, two, three, four routes for this particular set of parameters. Now, uh, you can change all of this. You can come here to the beginning. 
uh, uh, we can change the capacity to 20 and let's put maybe 25 clients let's run it all and you're gonna be noticing that this is gonna take a lot longer uh, this problem is an NPR problem uh, you you won't be able to solve this very fast especially if you start adding many clients uh, you can add uh, for example a time limit so I'll interrupt this uh, and let's see I'm gonna add some parameter is this still running still running let's see all right is it a stop I'm not getting the uh, Okay, there we go. Let's start. Okay. Parameters. Mm, time limit. Okay. I'm gonna put what? Let's just do 15 seconds. Okay. And run it all again. So it tells you that you put a time limit of 15 seconds. So it's gonna run until it runs out of time. There you go. It's 2000. Now the solution is not optimal. You can actually we can actually see if it's whether it's optimal or not. Um, let's see if I remember this. Um, have a solution. Something else. Um, okay, let's see. Okay, I forgot. I forgot. It. Okay, here it is. Solve status. Finally. God. There. So this is a feasible solution. If it was an optimal solution, it would say optimal solution. It would have a number two. All right. Uh, this is. It looks very messy. Um. And that's it. That's pretty much it. Let's see uh, if I make it a smaller problem, it would have to tell me that it's optimal. Let's make it with 10. It seemed to run fast with 10. And there you go. This one is optimal. It's nice. This is nice and neat. I believe this is it. This is all I had prepared. Um, if you need more details uh, or have any doubt on how to get Ciplex running with Python, uh, you can write a comment. I'll try to reply it as far as, as possible. Uh, I know this is my first video in a very, very long time, uh, but I'm still here and I'm not planning to make more videos. I'll be using Python more often. Um, I'll try to come up with some new videos in Java if you if you also want it uh, but Python is very very fast to do some prototyping and get something running really quick um, so this is it thank you